Commissioners Meeting, recorded April 3, 2019. it's that time and we can begin with the roll call and we should follow it up with introductions because there are a lot of new faces here. Okay. Freckman. Here. Kladowski. Here. Hall. Here. Kirsch. McDonald. Here. O'Connick. I believe is excused. I know there was one other person Todd told me but I wrote Four different sets of notes, and I can't find that one. Shore. Here. Slowinski. Smith. Here. Sorensen. And Zerazua. Here. Okay, and let's go around the room or two and, and uh, kind of reinforce what we just did. We'll start with okay. uh, Liz. Uh, I'm Liz McDonald. Mikira Zerazua. Sue Hall. Bob Frackman. Scott Badoon, Interim Director, here for my one and only meeting, most likely. <laughs> uh, Mike Ledusky. Kyle Smith. And uh, David Chora. Okay. And item number two, approval of the April 3rd, 2019 minutes, and uh, we at least we have a few people that were here for that. I'll, so. <laughs> I'll move. Okay, move. Uh, I'll second. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> If not, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Okay. Update on the Willett Arena renovation. Willett Arena. Uh, really, and the short story is that it's uh, right on schedule, which is uh, amazing to hear because I know they ran into a few issues. With some of it, every time you renovate an existing structure, you never always know what you're going to find. Uh, so they had a few issues. Uh, essentially, for the most part, all the mechanical work is, is completed. There are a few things that still need to be tied in, so now they're working on the floor um, and, and other elements of the, of the construction. Uh, press box is nearly complete. They're doing electrical work now, and then they'll do the finish work after that is done. Uh, dasher boards should arrive in August. New floors should go in in, in July. So uh, no reason to think, at least at this point in time where we are, that we shouldn't be completed on time on schedule. Great. Good. Okay, and then continuing on with updates on cultural commons that I see from the outside, a lot's going on there. There is a, a lot going on. Uh, cultural commons, unlike World Arena, is a little bit behind. I know the original schedule had them finishing up on Memorial Day weekend. Uh, as you know, we see that that did not happen, uh, but they are otherwise getting close to the end with a few exceptions to, to what will always happen. Uh, in short, Probably about the end of next week, they should generally have things wrapping up, and then they're going to start some of the restoration efforts to get it. So it should start to be something useful. But that won't necessarily mean that everything will be complete. Um, some of the things that still needed the, I don't know exactly where the bell is from Russia. It was in Chicago. It's supposed to be delivered. I think we expect it sometime this week. Um, and we get it, we'll offload it. We still need to, once we get that, then, you know, they have to design the beam that it's going to support it. The columns are already there, so it'll be a little bit of time there. Uh, the other two things uh, probably most significant with where we are that are probably going to trail a little bit with some of the others are the pavers. Uh, the, the pavers that we're otherwise planning to do there that we're, you know, to identify the, the donors and stuff haven't been engraved yet. So, of course, we can't install them until they're engraved. Um, so they're trying to work out a, a, a solution for that, how that might go, whether it all waits a little bit or whether they'll you know, install them and then replace them as, as they come in. Um, and then the other part is just the irrigation, which is really now kind of by the end of this week will be more into the city's realm to just do the final connection with, with that and things will be uh, coming together. So it's really coming into the final stages of, of construction um, and yeah, by the, uh, by the end of next week some of the fencing and stuff should coming down and it should be into restoration efforts. Okay, so uh, it's going to be open for use and for public uh, tour and that at, at that point in time, it should be less, yeah. you know, but the only concern would otherwise be is maybe the, the, the pavers and what avenue the others take there. Um, talking to Jim Anderson, most likely if, if they don't have a better plan or it doesn't look like it's going to be a, a short period of time, you know, they'll just hold off on the pavers for, I'll open it up without them. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, I would anticipate in about two weeks, it should be open to the public. Okay. And then Very there'll good. just be those few remaining items to be finished up after it, it's open. 
Okay, and then review and approval of playground equipment purchase and installation. The playground at Piffner Park is being replaced. Yes, and this was others handled by Forster Todd Ernster, who, as you others all know, though strange to me, that he's also responsible for playground equipment. <laughs> um, but he did put together that uh, spec was set up for quotes. We received three quotes, uh, one from Northland Playground, uh, one from Miracle, and one from Burke. Uh, I don't know if everyone's otherwise seen that. I was ex actually expecting everyone to have some of the stuff that I scrambled together here. But um, in the end, the with those three quotes, the lowest was actually from, from Miracle at $66,362, uh, the highest from Burke of $79,300, and the middle one, uh, Northland, at $75,400. Uh, Todd's recommendation, and I agree with him, is to go with the, the Northland bid, which is the middle one, um, for several reasons. The Miracle bid actually doesn't meet quite all the specifications we put together. There are several elements of the playground that they did not include. Uh, when adding those two is in, there's two major components of that. Uh, one is a merry-go-round, the other is a climbing wall. Uh, neither one of those are, and that nearly makes up that $9,000-ish difference. Uh, the second reason for it is that the initial design and concept and stuff was all done through Northland. Uh, we just feel that they understand what it is we want. You know, they met what, what was otherwise put together, uh, and we feel that they will be the best to deliver uh, on that. So, so the recommendation from staff is to go with the Northland quote for $75,400, which is still under budget of the $80,000 that was budgeted. So we're very good there. Okay, and then item number six, presentation of girls. Do we have to approve? Wait, we, have to, we, have to approve. we have to approve. Okay, the motion to approve. I'll move. Okay. I'll second, second it. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, then item number six, presentation of girls fast pitch softball uh, gazebo to be built in Kirky Park. Kirky Park. This is something that I don't know how much everyone has that. And I talked to uh, former <coughs> director Tom Schrader last month and it was presented to me. It sounded like maybe there was at least for those that have existed here some knowledge of that because this had been discussed at least before as a potential I don't know how much information you want me to get into it. There is an individual here that can explain a little bit more about it if you want to know more. And you, you have enough to hand out just, okay, to, to do this. Um, and I guess a little bit is he. Is he um, I just have the. I've seen it. And then if you want to go over here, state your, your name. 17 by 17 and a half. Uh, Jason Hassler, um, I'm with, it's Point Fast Pitch, but our legal name is Stevens Point Area Youth Girls Softball Association. Um, but we've been going by Point Fast Pitch for uh, as long as I've been on the board. Um, we would like to build a seating area by the scoreboard. Um, it's a little gazebo, I, I, we can call it pavilion, gazebo. It's kind of going to look like the dugouts that are out there except bigger. We're going to have a concrete sidewalk coming off of the asphalt parking lot going into the area. It'll be big enough for two picnic tables. Um, it'll be higher at the parking lot area and it'll slope down and it actually, the back of the fence or the top of the fence will be about the same height as the back of the gazebo. So you can come in and allow, uh, it'll allow everybody that uses Gherky. But when we have our tournaments there, it'll allow us to set up for t-shirt sales, for registration. when. Uh, the out-of-town teams come in we can set up there but I know uh, the Frisbee it'll give them a spot to get out of the Sun and we just think it'd be a good we'd like to add to Gerke Park we use Gerke Park a lot and I think it'll help out everybody in the city but it'll help us out a lot and we've done some fundraising and we got it all covered okay questions um, does this affect the school system at all? The PJs. We're on the we are on the city property. Okay. We're right off the actually pretty much the parking lot. I think is pretty close to the the line of the school property. We're not going to affect the school like parking or anything. And if people who play softball, if you park there, your car is going to get hit. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, the only issue would be, I guess. Um, because it'll be set back about six feet from the parking lot, the city plows it. They may have to just, 
but the you know they may have to work to push the snow a you know a little bit different than they normally do. But the power pole is the light pole is already right there, and the scoreboard's there. So when they swing, they already got to avoid those. So it may be a little more work for the city plowing for storage area, but I won't affect the school at all. So what, what kind of material is for the roof? Or it's, it's, it's a metal, it will go with the metal roof just like we have on the dugouts. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's a six by six treated post. We're gonna pour a six inch concrete slab. Um, we're either gonna put um, caissons down or we may just put a footing around there. We're still working on the design of that. I've been talking to a number of designers. Okay. Um, with the sand area, if we actually need to go with a big caisson or if we just, uh, but it'll be a six inch slab if we go with a foot or a deeper frost wall around the edge. But it'll be untreated six by six posts. Um, you can see there'll be six of them. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be two by 10 headers and then there'll be joists running off of that. So it'll all be treated. We don't plan on staining it. Um, so for maintenance issues, I don't really don't, it's, we maintain most of the stuff that we use right now. Yeah. Okay, so. I have a question. Did you say that you have raised the money to we, do this? We've had donations in Point Fast Pitch. As a nonprofit, we have have some money, and we've decided that we should put it, invest it back in. Um, each year, or I think every three years, we replace the grit at Gerke Field, and we have some extra, and we would like to put this towards that. So this is ready to go as far as the, the fundraising. I, it, we're, we have it covered. It's the money is there. It's, we're not asking for any money. We have it. Everything. Um, one of our donors is going to do the ex excavating for us uh, at no charge. Um, I have a friend who's in the concrete business that I'm working on him to get a lower price on concrete if we supply the labor. Um, I have a couple of builders that have offered their expertise if we supply the labor. So we're trying to keep it as the cost down as much and point fast pitch, put our blood, sweat, and tears into it. I just think it's wonderful how many people in this community step up to uh, to do things like you are doing. Thank you very much because yeah, yeah. Um, Thank you. it is Thank you. It's, it's wonderful that we get these opportunities and, and things for our youth and especially for sports. To, volunteer yeah um i my daughter played for point for quite a few years and during the tournaments there was no shade in that park at all i mean people would go to their cars or leave or whatever so i mean i i believe this is going to be a great addition to the park um you know anything, everything but positive so i will move in the, are we doing a move or are we doing a motion or are we just doing i think a we need a motion don't we, to approve yes. okay so I'll, I'll, as I'll make the motion. Can I have the second? I'll move to approve. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. I was just going to move to approve it. So <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, this, this thing any, should fly through. So. Any further discussion? Okay. Well, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. My team is practicing right now. Do you mind if I get back out? <laughs> <laughs> Just came in and uh, get back out. So, thank you. Thank Thanks you. again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Then the one remaining uh, item of the director's report is election of officers and. Hi. Um, yes. Election oh, of um, officers? Yeah, and just to remind everybody that. Uh, uh, you can serve for two consecutive years, and I think the current status is neither of us have, have uh, served for two years, just one year. Who is the vice president? Here we go. Those, yeah. yeah, Betty had prepared this. I think I understand she does this every Tom year Connor. to do that, so there's right. the list of who the officers, current officers are. There should be so several right there if you want to pass them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can pass, pass this around. Pass those down. <laughs> you need one back? Yeah, put maybe one sub back in that direction. Thank you. <laughs> We're good here. Okay, I'd like. You want to nominate? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay. For I'd some like reason, Sue always winds up doing this. <laughs> I do. I like to nominate other people to do. Well, because you guys do a great job, I would like to nominate then Bob Freckman and O'Connick for uh, to do their second term of 
uh, of office. I'd second that. <laughs> Any other discussion? Okay, so uh, I guess a motion to accept those uh, two would be in order. So moved. Oh, yeah, I'll second. I, second. Okay. Thank you. I thought we already did that. <laughs> <laughs> But all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> the end of the director's report. <coughs> right. Well, first off, I thank you, everyone, for letting me participate in mm -hmm. one of these. Um, I, I really want to come back to these. These move very quickly. I <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, a few things here, Larry's got for staff, I'll try to keep this relatively short, but uh, I mean, for tree planting, spring tree planting, um, pretty much completed. Um, there are a total of 187 trees, so quite a few. Um, I don't know if everyone's familiar with the Arbor Day celebration that was done. It actually uh, was very successful at Emerson Park. They planted <coughs> several trees there. Uh, annual flower bed planting has begun, although we did run into a snag on Water Street. Uh, apparently there's an issue with the service there, so we're gonna to have to hand water for a little while on those until we can get the service fixed. The utility department I think is gonna do that next week because uh, we can't turn on the irrigation until that's completed. The ash tree soil treatments um, have been taking place this month. Uh, later this month, they'll be doing the tree injections. Uh, let's see, uh, Jonathan uh, Hankins, park technician, received his pesticide applicator's license. He also attended the Civic Playground Inspection course, so we're getting um, keeping people up to, to date on, on what they need to do to do their jobs. The track meets and tennis meets are finished until the fall tennis starts. Uh, those are otherwise went off as far as I know very well. Uh, city crews are working on sidewalks, so working forestry departments working with uh, streets to work especially with those for the, the boulevard trees that have otherwise created an issue. Um, try to come up with even some of the solutions. It's not always just a matter of going in and fixing sidewalks when we know they're always going to happen again. So working together to see what can otherwise be done as far as protection of the tree and as far as trying to minimize any of the damage that might be created by said tree for, for our public sidewalks as well. Uh, there was an issue, I don't know if anyone's aware, we don't really know the cause of it at, at Texas Park, the swing set there. Several of the posts on there, and they're metal posts, actually they're cracked and they have, uh, some of them have some very sharp points to them. What exactly created <coughs> whether it was um, the, you know, a weather situation of sorts or whether it was just extreme horseplay that created it, we, we don't know. They've made temporary repairs to it. Uh, I would anticipate talking to Forster Ernster and we'll be evaluating that further uh, when the new director comes in to see what the others want to do. Um, <coughs> not exactly sure what can be done with it to keep it in the condition that we feel would be safe for the public for the long term. Um, so maybe something that will be coming up as a replacement here in the near future. Uh, tournaments are, are under swing with this weekend. Spive has their first tournament. Tournaments all throughout the, the month. So ball diamonds are, are being used all throughout the month and it's that time of the year again. And one of the very positive things otherwise to say is that all of our seasonal staff are on board. And in the last few years we've had struggles with people, even people that have accepted jobs you know, maybe showing up for one day or not showing up at all when it comes uh, down to it. Um, don't know if it's in completely related to the fact that we finally got around to increasing the pay, but it, it seems to be part of what it was for seasonals to, uh, to do that, but definitely gonna be helpful for full-time staff to have the people that they, they need to get all the work done that needs to be done, because there's quite a bit of it, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, other than that, a couple other things. There's the, we're still working, which is actually more of an engineering um, thing at the moment there on the Piffner irrigation. Um, trying to get that yet out the, the door uh, so we can get bid for this fall's installation. I know that was on the, the docket for a project. Uh, and then there's a couple of capital improvements f under parks that um, Supervisor uh, Halverson has. He's actually got a little bit of a struggle with and getting quotes for it and contractors, at least in the types of work that he's looking for, are a little bit difficult. Uh, one is the tuck pointing at Iverson, uh, not a big project, and maybe that's somewhat the issue is it's not that big of a project, but he's struggling to get quotes from 
contractors on the on the work. So he continues to pursue that. And our concern is that as it gets further into the the summer months, it may be more difficult um, to do that. But we're going to continue to try to do it, even if it becomes a, a fall project. So we'll have to otherwise see where that goes. The second one is the open shelter at the, the Ball Diamond in Iverson to extend the, the roof. And he's running into the same issue there that I think he's got one quote on each of them right now. So, um, you know, we otherwise talked, we continue to go through it at least through this month. Um, but depending upon what contractors tell us coming in, um, maybe presenting that back here even as early as next month with just the one quote, although we'd like to see more, of course. Uh, but it may just be a matter of the environment we're in and you know if we want to get these projects completed this year um, we may just have to move with what we we have and i promise you i'm almost done i'm like the longest night I'm on the, <laughs> list the uh the fountain is on however there are some problems with the valves uh, the new head is in but there isn't any water flowing through it at the moment so uh, we're waiting on some repairs there and some parts to come in to get that fully functioning i already talked about the irrigation Mr. Hassler talked about fast pitch league starting. And the last thing on my list is just the unfortunate graffiti that we've recently had, that at the Sculpture Park, as well as that in Piffner. And staff has uh, worked very diligently to remove as much of it as that they can, uh, while being conscious of what you know, surface they're working on, as to, especially <coughs> with the sculptures, not to create you know, any damage or adverse effects. And we've pretty much exhausted everything that we can, we can do. We even bought uh, some new chemical treatments to, to deal with the situation that seem to actually work better. I think we've now found maybe a new product that we're going to use in the future. Uh, it's something that we are rather aware of but hadn't tried. Uh, so we have that, but we've, we've done as much as we, we can so, uh, to that. So uh, are we pretty close to having erased the damage? We're, we're pretty close, yeah. yeah. yeah there is, in many cases, you, you really have to be looking for it to, to see it. Yeah. Now, with the exception of maybe some of the sculpture pieces there, because we just didn't want to damage them, <laughs> we did the best we could in there. So that's probably the exception where there may be a little bit more visible graffiti remaining. And that's just unfortunate because you know, we, you know, we don't want to damage you know, yeah. the sculptures as they exist. So trying to take care um, with those pieces. Is this the first act like that that's occurred out there at uh, Sculpture Park? As far as I know, it is. Um, mm -hmm. So I, that, I can only, surprising that, you know, Director Schrader leaves all of a sudden there's graffiti. I don't know if it's really <laughs> 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 yeah, so, but, uh, but yeah, unfor it's just unfortunate. But yeah, talking to uh, former Director Schrader, yeah, there was not other ways aware that anything like that had yeah. happened out there before. Okay, yeah, so. I was, gonna, I was just going to say that uh, I get to go before the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Todd Ernster e uh, emailed us that, um, that he's going to be doing the trees uh, in Kushkushki Park uh, this Tuesday, and we were just wondering, we meaning Audubon, it just was wondering if he needed any help. Uh, he didn't say so much. He did identify that, though, you know, the work was going to otherwise continue there, uh, especially regarding the, the prairie planting, but he didn't say anything as far as help, at least to me. I, I admit I, I didn't ask him directly. Yeah, well, but we're, I, yeah we're help. Yeah, we're, well, if you're willing to help, prairie, I'm sure you'll take prairie it. Prairie so. planting, okay. I just had a comment. As far as the sculpture park, I went through last weekend with my family, and I, even knowing that this happened there, I didn't <laughs> see where. So yeah. covered it up pretty well. <laughs> That's a good thing. Good comment. Yes. <clears throat> uh, my name is Steve McKay. I live at 2100 Michigan, Michigan Avenue. Uh, I got a comment about the graffiti or a suggestion. Uh, Central Company is an ugly building, and it's right there in the middle of Riverfront Rendezvous. Just a thought, maybe opening that building up for graffiti, a place they can do it, unless it's lewd, then the park's can paint over it. That way we can may maybe control it. Just a suggestion. It's an ugly building. <laughs> it could pretty it up. <laughs> it's an interesting <laughs> idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it does work in other cities. Yeah. It's like, holy cow. It's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Idea. Yes, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. 
I don't know if we can get criminals to use a designated graffiti area. <laughs> this, this spot right here is designated to commit crimes. Um, so a couple of things uh, in conjunction with the director's report. First of all, this is Director Badoon's, Interim Director Badoon's last meeting, uh, and first meeting. So uh, we wish him well in, 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 in whatever he pursues. Future endeavors as Public Works Director. Um, so we have a new director hired. His name is Dan Kramer. He is currently the Parks Director at Portage, the city of Portage. And he will be joining us, his first day will be June 26th. So don't bombard him with everything right off the bat. Wait till at least June 27th. Uh, but we'll be taking him around and introducing him. He will be baptized by fire since the very next week is Riverfront Rendezvous. And he and I will be um, hanging out there. So if you are at Riverfront Rendezvous, try and find me and we can introduce you to uh, new director, Dan Kramer. A um, couple of other things. There was some damage at one of the boat docks at uh, Buchholz. I believe that the, the streets department guys got in there and, and straightened it out. It looks like someone probably ran into one of the docks and it was unstable, so they got that fixed. Um, that was like almost two weeks ago already. The goose abatement program um, is moving along. There, it, it's a noise-making program which <coughs> effectively uses like small explosives to make the bang. Um, and the police chief or fire chief rather is working on that to see what sort of permit they need because technically it's an explosive, um, and he needs uh, there's some additional regulations that need to go into effect there. As Director Badoon said, the bell from Rostov Veliki Russia. I just checked the tracking and. It's, it's on a flight to Chicago. Um, once it hits Chicago, then it'll be driven up here, taken to the streets department. Um, and then I know Roger Skritkowski was working on some sort of mounting brackets, uh, but they'll get that installed and hopefully it won't take too terribly long there. Um, Riverfront Rendezvous is coming up. Everything is going very well there from what I understand. This is going to be one of the best fireworks displays we've ever had. We put uh, a call out, as you know, the past couple of years, we've been asking for donations, um, and we exceeded even my expectations this year. Uh, so this year's fireworks display should be phenomenal. Tonight is the first city band concert at Piffner Park, so if you're bored after the meeting, swing on by. <laughs> Tomorrow kicks off the Levitt Amp series at Piffner Pioneer Park. Um, and as you know, the, there's more than just music out there. There's games and food and drinks and activities for the kids. Um, those are all going to be going now 10 weeks. Uh, we'll have that Levitt Amp series every Thursday at Piffner Pioneer Park, City Band on Wednesdays, and then pretty much every weekend we've got some sort of festival. So uh, get out and enjoy the parks. Thank you. Yeah, Liz. I have a question for the, for the mayor, if I can <coughs> ask right away. Mike, could you make some comments about uh, the new dock down at Buchholz Park, the new fishing dock? Uh, so, um, yes, the, the um, well, everybody involved has uh, agreed to put in one 32-foot dock um, near the Riverfront Art Center to try and allow people to utilize not only the riverfront a little bit better, but make that connection to downtown. We're starting out very small so people can come to cruise down the river, tie off their boat, go into Main Street, grab something to eat. This is a collaborative effort between not only the cultural commons people, the downtown business people, Prime Water Anglers, which is a fishing club that I'm a member of, and I, I, we've done a lot of par projects with the park, uh, and of course the city. The um, fundraising is going very well. The dock is built. We are just waiting on some additional permits from the Department of Natural Resources. Again, we're not 100% sure what permits we need, um, so we're trying to figure that one out. Uh, we'll be attaching a removable dock they're pouring a slab, which means there's going to be some shoreline work, and that is where the, the kind of the goofiness is. Because you're removing some shoreline and replacing it with concrete, um, you, you need some additional DNR permits, apparently. Once that's done, um, the dock will be put in and removed each year by the city, um, and it'll be open to the public. Uh, it's not going to be a permanent dock site. It will be just specifically short-term use. So come down to Riverfront Rendezvous or Levitt or City Band or go grab a bite to eat downtown. They have a fundraiser called Rock the Dock. Um, I believe that's June 14th. 
and that's going to be down at Piffner Pioneer Park. There's music um, and I imagine some raffles. This is going to be a fundraiser to help pay for the costs associated with that dock. Um, we don't have a date yet as to when it's going to be installed, but I'm really hoping it's installed before Riverfront. Actually, Mike, that's really that's really a, a great uh, program. But I was referring to the nice fishing dock that. Oh, that one. Water, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's. I'm sorry. There are too Park. many cool <laughs> things going on in the Stevens Point parks. So yes, uh, just earlier this week we had a dedication for a cantilever accessible fishing pier right in Buchel Park. So as you come around the lagoon um, and make the the full loop, it's right on the river, uh, and that was done in conjunction with a couple of generous community donors, um, Chris Ebert and his family uh, in memory of their mom, Jack and Linda Furkus, who have always been big supporters of the parks and the Humane Society, um, Prime Water Anglers, again, uh, constructed it, and uh, a couple of other donors, Jan and Sam Nelson. Jan was handled all the engineering work and, and most of the supervision when it comes to construction, but that is now open. So we have an accessible fishing pier that is available for anyone to use, uh, right in Buchel Park at the, it would be the very south end of the lagoon on the river side. Uh, and we had the ribbon cutting for that on Monday. So that's also available. It's really nice. If you've not seen it, you should take a little drive down there, walk down there and take a look at it. It's, really it's going nice. to be a great place to watch a sunset too. Yeah. It's, it's out into the river a little bit, you know, probably 15, 20 feet. Yeah. Uh, so you can get a nice shot down to the sunset. Interesting. Th th thank you, Chair. Um, I have a question um, here at the beginning of summer related to the end of summer and just whether we've ever, I guess it's a question for the whole board, has, um, in relation to the pool, has, has there ever been discussion or consideration of, um, in some cities they let everybody bring the do their dogs in that last, uh, just before you're draining it? Yeah. So, yes. There has been consideration. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. Oh. Well, so we don't have an easy way in and out of the pool. We have ladders. We don't have a ramp. We don't have steps. They're ladders. So the shallowest end, um, you wouldn't be able to get a dog in and out. I want to do something like that. Hmm. We are working, however, on um, starting to raise money for a splash pad, which would be at grade. Um, and then we would be able to allow uh, a dog day or a couple of dog days. But as it sits right now, the pool is not designed such where there's easy access to get the dogs in and out. Uh, but yes, we did talk about that. I know Marathon Park does it a couple of times a year uh, as a Humane Society fundraiser, and that's really what triggered it. Right. Being a dog guy, um, yeah. I thought it was a great idea. But in discussing it with former director Schrader, because the, the nearest spot- no, I, I, I'm just thinking back to, um, like I've seen it in Iowa City, and I'm thinking that there might not have even been a shallow end in the pool that they used in, in the, when I saw it, it What it is, is it comes down to a matter of getting the dogs in and out. Yeah. So with our pool, you have yeah, yeah. a lip. You jump in, there is no ramp or stairs where the dogs can get out. You would have to pick up the dog and pull them out. Right. Um, so there's no easy way to get them out and therefore we're, we're really not able to do it. I mean, yes, we could and then require people to pick up their dogs, but. It's not terribly practical. Right. I think that uh, at grade splash pad is our best idea. Right. And uh, that would be in addition to the, the regular municipal pool. You got the kiddie pool and the regular pool. We found a spot, Director Schrader and I, where we could implement uh, a splash pad. Thanks. I have a question for the mayor, too. <laughs> I, I got a phone call because you and I were on the, the dog park committee. Mm -hmm. What? Um, what about the, the, all the water that's in the dog, the, our dog park now? I mean, is there, they wanted to know, are, you gonna, are we going to fill it in or is something like that? Because they said the dogs get through and they get in their cars and it's really like mess. So um, first of all, it is on top of a clay surface. So the water doesn't drain, it sits there. Um, we've also had, uh, I just saw Justin Lowe tell me that we're five inches above average for this, the year with rain. So we've had an excessive amount of rain as well. Um, we have worked on some drainage up there on some really problem parts. But the bottom line is my dogs love the water. Yeah. Some dogs don't. Um, I know Carlene's got big, white, fluffy dogs, and they like going to play in the water too, and they turn out to be muddy dogs. 
Um, but my dogs love it. Other people's dogs love it. Uh, there's people posting pictures of their dogs playing in the park. We've had the water tested twice. Yeah. There is no contamination whatsoever. Um, of course, the stagnant water will sit there and breed mosquitoes and, and things like that. But some dogs love it. Some dogs don't. Um, and there's no real practical way. You, you fill one hole and another one starts because it's, it's an old landfill. So it's constantly shifting as it degrades. Uh, it would be a never-ending battle, but the bottom line is some people love it, others not so much. Do dogs and, and owners disagree about, about it? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carlene's, Carlene's the funniest, well, not funniest, but she's got big, white, fluffy dogs. And you get a dog in a water hole with some mud rolling around, um, <laughs> a big, white, fluffy dog becomes a sloppy mess pretty quick. Uh, we're used to it. My dogs know. When we come home from the dog park, they go right downstairs into the shower to get washed off. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's six and one half dozen of another. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, if there's real problems, like it's on a path or something like that, we'll try and get the drainage to, to clear that water. But if it's off the beaten path, um, people still are able to use it if they want their dogs to play in the water. And if they don't, uh, it's hopefully a little easier for them to keep their dogs under voice control and not let them go in the water. But the water's tested and it, it's safe. Oh, that's good. Well, the people that called me, I, I said, call Mike Weezer, and they said, we called him and he's out of town. I said, yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> like, like, out of town, really. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right. Come on up here, please. <laughs> the, the reason we do that is because the microphone picks up for the radio and TV. Uh, yeah, question back about that dock. Uh, how which, which dock? The, uh, the one, <laughs> the one by the art center. Gotcha. Uh, how big is it? And then, depending on your question answer, I might have a follow up. Thirty two feet. And how wide? Uh, whatever ADA requirements are, I think it's six. Okay. Do I uh, know where it would be stored? It's going to be stored on site, basically right next to the shoreline oh, where it's going to be. Oh, just on the shoreline. Yep. Okay. Okay, any other business? Anything um, else? I have a yes. question for yeah. Scott. Uh, Scott, has there been any further discussion of the possibility of either a bike trail or walking trail um, along Mead Park to connect to that road? Because there's a, that one way street creates problems for bicyclists because, I mean, it's, as a bicyclist, I usually ignore that one way and kind of come in the wrong way if I'm going up to Mead Park. I know, but, <laughs> but and I know I shouldn't be doing that, but just to go into the park, if I'm coming from someplace on the west side, I'm not really going to go around to Clark Street and then come in. Right, and, and at the moment there there isn't, uh, simply because we're kind of looking at other streets that have other needs, you know, we're looking at some, adding some of those other appurtenances to streets that are otherwise being resurfaced, and since we're not doing a lot there we haven't spent much time looking at it, though it has been talked about uh, is there a little asphalt left over from some job that you could just lay a little <laughs> a little bike trail in there i wish there was if we had some we'd be using it i think oh yeah there's plenty, plenty of holes to use to do, it, unfortunately. Yeah. True. But it's definitely something we'll continue to you know consider okay. and talk about and depending upon what other sorts of projects and stuff we have coming on there because what we are looking at you know right now um later this year we'll be reversing the the direction of of the parking on West Whitney, there next to Mead Park, going with reverse angle. We'll also be adding a speed bump in there to try to control the speed. Um, the other things we are evaluating is whether we convert the um, intersection there, or there, you know, from the the parking lot, out, whether we go back to two way. Oh, and, that, and that's been kind of a debate in, internally and with other commissions as far as whether that's the right way to do it or. Or not so there are definitely ongoing discussions we have nothing planned at the moment so. okay thank you okay anything else well i guess a motion to adjourn would be in order i so move second second, second. all those in favor signify by aye aye, aye. aye. that's it This meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, 
stevenspoint.com slash videos.